My presentation is on suspensory ligament injuries in horses. I chose this topic because my horse has been dealing with an injury like this for the past year and a half, so I've learned a lot about it over that time. So the suspensory ligament is found below the knee on the back of all four legs of the horse. In this uh, cartoon diagram, it is this yellow band coming down the back of the leg. It comes down in one piece and then right at this fetlock joint, which could be considered the ankle of the horse, it splits into two branches, a lateral and medial branch on either side of the leg. Um, you can also see it on the exterior of the leg. Right here, this number two is parting to one of, or pointing to one of the branches of the suspensory. And then right here, this is also the suspensory showing as well. So the purpose of the suspensory ligament is to prevent overextension of the fetlock joint. It also acts as a spring and is an essential part of the suspensory apparatus. So flipping back here, all of these tendons and ligaments here make up the suspensory apparatus. And basically when the horse is in the full weight bearing stage of its stride, it prevents the fetlock from falling and touching the ground. So in disciplines like stadium jumping, where the horses are jumping six, seven foot jumps, um, you can imagine that injuries of the, on the front end are more common. In this photo in particular, you can see it's almost bent at a right angle almost. So that's a lot of stress on that suspensory ligament. In order to prevent injuries, if you are um, a stadium jumper, you would not practice jumps like this every day. Even the Olympic horses, which jump huge jumps, they practice over smaller fences so they don't stress the suspensory ligaments as much. In disciplines like dressage, which is my discipline of choice, um, suspensory ligament injuries are more common on the hind end. So this lady is doing a pirouette on her horse, which is basically a 360 degree turn on the hind end. So you can see here the fetlocks are very close to touching the ground. And again, upper level dressage horses like this, you don't practice moves like this every day because that is too much pressure on the suspensory ligament. You would practice moves like this maybe once a week or every two weeks. Or if you're like my horse Kit, you slip and fall in the mud. And that's how you <laughs> tear your suspensory. She did not tear it during dressage. She teared it playing with her friends. So this is Dr. Hermita at the Purdue Large Animal Hospital giving her some shockwave therapy, which I'll talk about in a minute. So some of the initial signs of injury, um, within the first few days of the injury, you can have heat and swelling as possible, but does not always happen. Kit is boarded at a barn, so we did not catch heat or swelling because she's not handled every day. But she did present lameness, which is also presented in every suspensory injury. So I can play a little bit of this video. Her lameness is subtle, but you might see it better if you focus on her head bobbing when she comes around the other side of the circle. It's actually her inside leg with the white sock that is the lameness, or that is the injured leg. The rear leg, no. Yes, the, okay, the back hind left. leg. So it's really subtle and it comes and goes, but it was consistent for months and that's what when we decided to go to the veterinarian. So when you go to the veterinarian, the first thing they're going to do is a lameness exam. And if you haven't heard or seen a lameness exam done before, basically they put one of the legs into a really deep stretch and then hold it for 30 seconds, drop the leg and have the horse trot off immediately. And the idea is if that leg is injured, holding it into that stretch is going to make it really sore, acutely sore, and it'll exaggerate the lameness when the horse trots off. So if the lameness is exaggerated, you can be confident that you've identified which leg is injured. The next step would be to do a diagnostic nerve block. This can take a lot of time, but you're basically focusing in on the area of the leg that is injured. So we started from the top and worked down, which wasn't that great because her injury was at the bottom, so it was kind of extensive. So you'll put in basically like a numbing solution to describe it as simply as I can, and um, then you'll do another lameness exam on that leg. And the idea is if you block out a certain joint and then the horse does a lameness exam and shows improvement, then you can be confident you have found the area that is injured. Because you're stopping the pain from going to right. the brain. Right, so it's all, this whole process is to hone in on where, where the lameness is so you're not spending a bunch of money on diagnostics and trying to find it. The next step is an ultrasound. 
which is to hone in even further where it is. And if you look over here, it's harder to see on this left side, but they are showing the suspensory ligament injury here. It's easier to see on the right side. This is a tendon. You can see the straight horizontal striations there, and right here you can also see straight horizontal striations. This is a suspensory ligament, and this huge bulge here is showing inflammation of that ligament. And this looks more like white noise rather than regular striations. Ultrasounds are a little difficult to read, but it's easier to see it on this side. Um, it is possible to do an MRI for your horse, but it is very expensive. It is more effective. MRIs will catch suspensory ligament injuries 100% of the time, while ultrasounds can only catch it about 75% of the time but not everyone has access to an MRI. You can have the lameness exam, nerve block, and ultrasound done at your farm, but an MRI, you might have to travel pretty far to get access to one of those. So the first issue with suspensory ligament injuries are, is they're often misdiagnosed or missed completely, and they're commonly mistaken for a joint issue. So when I was talking about the nerve block, if you, nerve, if you block out the hawk right here, some of this fluid can kind of trickle into where the suspensory ligament is and also numb that. So if the horse had an injury at the very top of the suspensory ligament and you blocked out the hock, they might pass the lameness exam, which causes you to think that the injury was in the hock. So you'll start doing some hock treatment and then later on you'll see that it didn't work because you missed that it was actually slightly lower in the suspensory ligament. That did happen to me. Um, also, the symptoms can be sporadic and the physical signs can be subtle, such as the lameness that I was experiencing with my horse. It was very subtle. It was off and on depending on her activity level at pasture, and it was really hard to catch sometimes. She would look better for weeks, and then I would take her out and try to do something with her, and she would be lame the next day. So it was hard to see um, where she was actually injured. So the treatment for a suspensory ligament injury, regardless of its severity, is always going to have rest, ice, and compression, just like if a person were to tear one of their ligaments, it's the same thing. Um, shockwave therapy is an option. So this is a picture of shockwave therapy. A little bit about that is um, the problem with ligaments is when they tear, ligaments are made of striations, and when they tear, they don't grow back in perfect striations, which makes you susceptible to re-tear. Shockwave therapy has been proven so far to speed up the healing process and also help the ligament come back stronger so it's less susceptible to a re-tear. It's pretty new and there's not a lot of studies on it, but we were recommended to do that at Purdue Animal Hospital, so we did. Surgery is possible, but that's usually only done for horses of really high value, such as racehorses. Um, Regular people like myself usually wouldn't do surgery because it's a hit or miss and it's very, very expensive. And unfortunately, there are some injuries of the suspensory which do require euthanasia that a horse isn't going to come back from. So the prognosis for injuries like this is better for the front limbs. Usually those horses can be back to activity in a few months. Injuries in the hind limbs take longer and they only recover about 14% of the time with rest alone. So those injuries will require addition of an intense rehab program after a certain duration of rest. And injuries of the suspensory, suspensory branches require nine months of rest first, and then you can start your rehab program. And like I said, for some horses, it is too severe and retirement might be their only option. So to give you an example of a rehab program, this would just be for a moderate in injury, and this is the type of program that my horse has been doing. They are required to be confined to a small stall or a small paddock alone by themselves so they can't re-injure. Um, you'll begin with 15 minutes of hand walking, progress to 40 minutes after a month, and 60 minutes after two months. This rest period can be the hardest thing for some horses. If you think about the types of horses that are gonna tear their suspensory, it's usually high activity level, high energy horses that are involved in competition and rigorous activity. So all of a sudden you're cutting off their physical, physical activity and confining them to a stall and requiring their only activity be hand walking. That was a really hard thing for my horse to do. Our hand walking looked like this. <laughs> so that's the second issue with suspensory ligament injuries. Is that your injuries. horse? No, no, you're just an example. Yeah, so um, that's the second issue with suspensory ligament issues. Okay. 
because you can't tell a horse to rest and you can't tell a horse, hey, you're injured, you need to calm down. So it's hard to recover from this. Then you move on to the riding phase. So you would ride a walk for two to three months and you would extend that throughout the time. And if the progress was good, you might add some trotting, still confined to a stall. And then you move on to the working phase, which you will add canter. So this example of a rehab, pro rehab program is if everything went absolutely perfect and in every checkup they were recovering. So it's best, basically the best case scenario, which brings me to the third issue. It's a lot of time and it's a lot of money. Um, the rest alone can extend upwards of a year, year and a half. My horse has been on rest for a year and a half now and she's my only horse, so it's made me be on rest for a year and a half. And horses owned by private owners have a better chance because they are willing to put that time and money into their horse. Unfortunately, some racehorses, if they haven't been very successful in their career, they're usually dumped off or, you know, sent to slaughter or something because it's not worth putting the money into it. And it's hard to tell whether you're advancing too quickly or too slowly through the recovery since the symptoms are so sporadic. So to conclude this, um, suspensory ligament inju injuries can be devastating, but with enough time and dedication, you can come back 100% from it. Um, Kit's coming to school in September, and we're going to start the writing phase of rehab, so we're hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we had three great presentations. Here's how we clap in this class. They did great, but you can't clap while when there's a dog in the class, because some dogs freak. So listen to what I do. Okay, you gotta do that. Okay, if you gotta go, go, okay? If you if, you, if somebody can do uh, Wednesday and they haven't signed up, see me. And uh, thank you so much, excellent, I mean, wow. And that, we didn't have to pay for any of that. Thank you.